So, that's right guys, you've asked for this because we tried it before and many of you seemed enthusiastic about it, so we're gonna try it again and we have something very special for you. Yeah, this is an update of what's going on and what's happening with our all new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. As you may know, we have purchased it almost two months ago. Yep. And we've, well, you probably see there's something on the back of it that's we're very excited about. 5,000 miles we put on it and we've been pretty hard on it. We've actually taken it off road. We've towed with it. We've done mileage loops with it. Speaking of mileage loops, in the very near future, we're going to have the Denver 100 mileage loop test featuring five mid-sized trucks. Yes, uh, all at the same time. Uh, it's coming up very soon this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that later on for the folks in the back who didn't hear. Yep, and also this is your chance, of course, your opportunity to give us feedback, uh, you know, tell us what we're doing great or what we're doing, doing horribly. No, no, yeah, no, none of the horribly stuff. Actually, be nice today. It's, it's Easter Monday. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of. It's April 1st as well. But, but this is not a joke. We're actually, we really are live. Uh, we do want your feedback, and this is the time to do it. If you have questions, just let them out. You know, we have a guy here to read them, too. His name is Roman. Yes. Yeah. The CEO. So we should probably talk about this, Blueberry, and what we've done to it, which is really one major thing. Yes, so of course we, we want to be first in testing new pickup trucks like right. we've always done. And so we were one of the first to pick it up. We flew down, Roman and I flew down to uh, Houston, Texas, and we picked this up. This is a TRD off-road. So of course I wanted two things. In the, every pickup truck has to have two things. Off-roadability, yeah. so we got a TRD off-road model, and towing. So we got a towing package, but we didn't get a trailer brake controller. No, and just so you know, for those of you who may not be aware of all the different, you know, the cadence of uh, Toyota trucks, there is a TRD Pro that is coming. It's not here yet. We were not able to get that because, well, it's not available. Well, actually, it's coming this month. This so, month. Yeah, Roman and I are going out to California this month. We're going to drive the new TRD Pro and a Trail Hunter, actually drive it, and later on this month, we'll be able to show you everything about it. All right, so now that you know, let's have a look at what we did here. All right, let's walk around. Uh, Roman, are there any more questions right now, as of right now? Yeah, we do have a question uh, from Jono. I'd like your opinion after owning it for a month. Does it justify the price increase? That's the first question out there, gentlemen. So does it justify the price increase? I can address this uh, briefly. Yeah, I, I, I mean, just drove it last Friday, mm -hmm. just a couple days ago. And I love the response from this turbocharged engine. So first of all, it's quick, it feels sprightly, it's eager to go. Yeah. Uh, I think they did a really good job. Um, 317 pound-feet of torque, let me pop the hood. Um, at 1700 RPM and an eight-speed auto. So, I, you know, it's, it has immediacy even here at higher elevation. Yes. I'll take care of this. All right. Let me repeat the question, Andre. Not what's the torque, not what's the horsepower. Does it justify the price increase? Let's be honest with these people. Oh, really? Because uh, I'm not honest sometimes. Okay, so um, <laughs> where, where, I, where I'm going with this is I love the torque and I love the seating position. Does it justify price increase? No, because I hate paying more. Your, your opinion. Well, uh, you, you know I'm the cheapskate here. Now, how much do we pay for this? 45,300 bucks. Great, that's $5,000 too much. That's my opinion. Right now, I think that the increase throughout the industry, not just with mid-sized trucks, I'm talking about all trucks, is between three and $5,000 too much to begin with. Um, and I think that you're seeing that across the board right now. So that's my personal opinion. I think this is a very good truck. I don't think it's worth the money. None of these trucks are worth the money. We need the third microphone. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. So I, I have an own, my own opinion. Uh, it's not 2019, guys. Somehow people still feel like you know we're back when you know trucks were five, ten thousand dollars cheaper. Everything is more expensive. You go to your grocery store and everything is more expensive. So I don't want to live like it's 2019. I think this truck definitely justifies the price increase given all the price increases out there. Uh, 
and I'm really getting tired of every comment on every video saying the truck is too expensive, too expensive. And I understand where it's coming from, guys. I get it. These things are expensive. If you have to take out a loan, it's crazy money. But then everything is more expensive. The world has changed, not for the better, I fear. But nevertheless, this is the world we live in. So let me give you another question, okay? Yep. Uh, do you guys think you compromise too much by getting, this is from Darkstar, by getting, um, getting one that didn't have all the features that you really wanted and you bought, uh, and you bought uh, two, meaning that you didn't work out all the bugs yet. So we bought a two new and it didn't have all the stuff we wanted. And you can show them all the empty spaces. Here you go, ahead, Nathan. In the, in the, you know, in the, well, yeah, you, you sure. So, so uh, just to counter the price point. Yeah, I agree to disagree. Um, but um, Chevy Colorado Trail Boss for 2024 with a towing package and the affordability is 42000 Right. $3,000 less than this. So this could be more affordable. I agree. Uh, a, a little okay. bit more. But let's talk about uh, what Roman was asking. So come on in, and you're going to see a couple blank spots in here. This truck did not come exactly the way we wanted, but the reason we, we got, got this light. truck the way it is is because we wanted to be very first, and that's exactly what we were. We were one of the earliest people to get our hands on one of these, but we had to do it out of sacrifice. So show them what's uh, missing. Yeah, so what's not missing is actually the rear locker, which is selectable now. Yeah! And we do have tow haul mode and uh, drive mode and multi-terrain select and crawl control modes. Uh, but I am missing, I kind of wish we would have gotten a disconnecting sway bar. Um, I'm a little bit bummed by this, but it was slightly a delayed feature that didn't come out the first week, but it came out a little bit later. So I'm kind of bummed a little bit about that. I'm also a little bit bummed because we're in Colorado that we didn't get heated seats. So of course, all of that is available. Um, also, you can get a giant screen. Right, uh, the big screen. Uh, the 14-inch screen you could also get. Uh, but if you get a TRD off-road premium packages, and there's several of them, they could be $10,000 more. So you could be paying 55 k for this if you got that. Okay, so we've got some more comments. I'm just going to read them to you, right? Uh, the Nenwick says, pickup trucks are the new limousines and command a price premium uh, for demand and styling. Uh, I think that's probably true. I'm not sure they're new limousines, but they certainly demand... Well, they're new family vehicles, right? Because they're no longer two-door pickups, you know, with no options. They're now for your entire family or friends. So you can have that. Uh, did Toyota upgrade the part that broke? Should we be concerned about the part if we buy one? So you want to talk about that, Nathan? Uh, yeah, I can address that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have some more recent information about this. Hit it. Um, so first of all, uh, we got a replacement part. So when our uh, ADD, the active differential disconnect, broke when we went off-roading, we got an entire differential replacement because they're, it's a warranty case. They're studying the part that broke. Um, so we did not get an upgrade. Should you be worried about it? Well, actually, we had several other channels go on the same trail as we did. They did not break. Also, in the coming weeks, about a week or two from now, Toyota will have an update. So we don't have a final investigation result from them. Um, I, I think just go for it right now. What do you think? Well, since then, we've taken this vehicle on several different little mini road trips. We've taken it off-road. It hasn't had any problems. And I gauntlet it. Yes, and we put it on the iContlet as well. Yes. But in terms of its four-wheel drive off-roading, uh, by the way, I'm just going to let you guys know, we tried to go back to the same trail and recreate the same thing. Unfortunately, it was completely snowed in, so we weren't able to do that yet. Eventually, I hope, we're hoping to get there. But we have put this on various off-road courses. It's done just fine. There hasn't been any issues. It is a sacrificial part. Uh, I'm not giving it any excuses because other vehicles, we've done lesser vehicles technically up that same trail and there hasn't been any issues. And also Roman and I towed up Luke's Killet Road, the steepest county yeah, road. Yeah, and that the, was rough on this in thing. In the country, we used four-wheel drive to tow a trailer right. up there. The truck performed great. That I was after the part after, was replaced. After, after. Yeah, that's uh, important to mention. And also I gauntlet, we towed 6,200 pounds up the steepest mountain. Yeah. So the bottom line is that we're still, this, you know, watch this space. I hate to say it like that. I hate that. But, but that's the point is that we're trying to figure out exactly what's going on with this. And we're and, going to keep you guys updated with everything we hear. And Toyota is not sitting still. I mean, they told me they're working on this. They have a huge team of people working on this. They just want to cross all the T's and dot all the I's. 
Yeah, because this happened early on, because this is one of the earliest trucks that something like that's happened with, they're checking on it, they want to double check it and make sure everything is good for you guys because they know the reputation is at stake and that's part of the deal. Yep. So should we move forward towards the back of the truck? Uh, this, this is a good question for you before we show them what we added to the truck. Uh, so, um, Ogier Meister, I think that's how you pronounce it, says, do you guys think that the hybrid would be a better option to go for towing, off-roading, and fuel consumption? I think people are going to be wondering that now that the hybrid's coming out. I can start. Yeah, go ahead. If you want to. Yeah, yeah, by all means. Um, so we have a little bit of information about this because the Tundra exists with mm. a hybrid and a non-hybrid. Yeah. So they're kind of downsizing that powertrain and offering it in a Tacoma. We haven't driven the hybrid Tacoma, obviously. Not yet. But the hybrid Tundra is not for efficiency. We found this out. It's for cooling power. Huge power. And also, you know, low-end torque because that electric motor helps, you know, with torque throughout the, kind of the driving range of the vehicle. So it's really for power, acceleration, and we've done a Tundra drag race. It does quite well at the drag race, um, but it's not really efficient. No, I would say, this is my own personal opinion, but I think you agree with me. When we were towing with the Tundra, doing the Ike, one of the things I noticed, and I'm, I'm gonna go back to this in a second, the Tundra drove almost like a diesel. Very low RPM for getting that torque up there. With two turbos, that was pretty impressive because normally you gotta spike them a little bit in order for them to really kick in and make power. At least that's the old thinking of turbos. Now, with that hybrid powertrain attached to it, you're basically getting more oomph and less strain on the engine in order to create that power, right? And that's yep. what we think is gonna happen with this uh, upcoming hybrid. And this turbocharged engine already has low end torque, yes. so it will feel like a diesel. I mean, really, really It should torque. launch like a mother. Yes. I mean, it should really go. But of course, we haven't towed with it. So I mean, all we can say is that we know it's gonna produce more power. Will it increase the tow uh, rating? No, probably not. Because See? It probably won't increase it because the gross vehicle weight ratings are about the same. Right, so it's based on the frame and it's based on the weight. And also the cooling that's available in mm. the front. Another question. Here you go. Um, so you want to break some news, Andre? Yeah, what's the news? Well, people are asking if we're going to trade it in on the uh, hybrid. Uh, but, the, but the answer to that is no, and if you guys want to break them break the news as to why we're not going to trade it in on the hybrid. Are we uh, going to trade it in the hybrid? No. The answer is no. But why? And, and, and the reason is that we are just about to receive the all-new Ranger Raptor. Hey, so, Ranger Raptor coming this way. The Ranger Raptor has never been in this country. No. I mean, it's been overseas in the previous generation. It's been It was sold. very different overseas. Yes. And now they still have, I mean, they still got the Ranger Raptor before us. Yeah. Australia. Everybody likes Europe, Australia. That's why. Asia. Yeah. But we, we ordered one. We, we should receive it very, very soon. We yeah. want to go out and actually do a road trip in it. So we want to experience as many manufacturers as possible, right? Um, so that's what we're doing. Love around between the brands, right? Yeah. Sp spread the love around and also experience brand new vehicles and show you brand new vehicles as well. Yeah, and so we're, we're, we're not gonna say much more than that because you know, we still have to get the vehicle. We haven't gotten our hands yeah. on it quite yet. Let's keep moving. Yes. Uh, so should we talk about now what we've done? Because this is a big deal. You talking about this? <laughs> what else would I be talking so, about? Yeah, so yeah, uh, so we uh, have a Go Fast Campers uh, GFC. We were one of the first to actually add this really wonderful, in my opinion, um, camping solution uh, to our Tacoma. By the way, GFC was kind of born in the Toyota community on the forums. There were you know, kind of crowdsourced there and crowdfunded, and then they're, now they're growing. We're one of the first to do it, and we're partnered with them on this project, and I really want to experience it. Yeah, I got to give them some credit. Now, I've seen a lot of rooftop tents. I'm not a big rooftop tent person. Honestly, I, I, I dislike them. But I will say that when you combine it with a, a topper like this and the way they did it and the structural integrity and the weight, I think they did a very good job. Yeah, so it's lightweight. We'll talk about all the specs. Uh, first of all, kind of, they have several things uh, at GFC. You can get just a topper. So basically this kind of part. So it looks like a truck topper. Uh, this is a full camper because we'll show you how it opens. Mm -hmm. um, they also have roof racks. Yeah, so they kind of have this has. Uh, yeah, 
roof rack and roof rack tents, right? So, so they have all those things. Can you pull and have it come up here and look at this? I really like the way they mill these things. They feel very beefy. All the components are like this. And once again, I'm not a big fan of rooftop tents, but I really like the way they designed this and the chunky components that they have on here. They really do feel overbuilt, so I'm very happy about that. So maybe we should go and open this thing up. What do you think? Let's do it. It's pretty quick. So all the sides are lockable, right? So you have a key. You can get a key to lock or unlock this. Uh, by the way, they, t they tested off-road. So this, this is a really tough unit. Um, so just kind of pull, oh, pull. pull on this. It's already out. I'm done. <laughs> um, open the tailgate. And you can open the other side. Um, and the whole point is this truck is meant for off-roading, right? Which is why this triangulation, like you said, is really uh, built up to make it tough. Yeah, this lower section let is me, super thick. Let me climb up really quick and open it. So they mill, they produce, this is USA made in Montana in Belgrade. I was at the factory recently with coal. Uh, we, kind of, we kind of showed all of that, and we have another video coming uh, from their factory. Um, so what do you think about this color, Nathan? Well, I actually kind of like it. Um, I mean, I, I prefer, I like Q's personally, <laughs> I, so I'm a little I, upset about that part. I, but I, no, but it stands out, and it's good, too, in the case of an emergency and stuff like that. What's really important is whether or not you fit. It's tangerine. That's tangerine? Yes. That's not tangerine. It, that's what it's called. It's emergency orange. I love it because it kind of adds color to the whole thing. Yeah, it, it does. It, it pops, that's for sure. Um, so the big question is, how much weight is this whole thing, which I believe is 300 pounds just under that, and then how much can it hold? So the static load on top of it is eight, up to 800 pounds. So how do you get into it? Yeah. We'll, we'll show that. Is okay. that. Do we have some questions, or do people still want to see it? People still want to talk about the show of rigging. Okay, well, yeah. we've talked about it a lot. Yeah. Do you I'll want to hold the, this yeah, light? I'll hold the light on you. So, um, so there's a couple of ways of getting into it. So, by the way, um, the starting price of one of these campers by GFC is around $8,300. Okay. Um, this is obviously a five-foot bed, a short bed, Tacoma. They offer this in many bed lengths. But because T Toyota redesigned kind of the bed height and the cab height, this is an all-new unit. They had to make it. So we got these custom side doors, uh, optional side doors, where you can put a, um, a ladder and you can actually enter from the side. Right, which is very helpful. I wanted to show something, though. Some of you guys might be curious. Come here. What they... Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to show them one thing. Um, right here, that is our Sirius XM slash satellite antenna, and they made enough of a gap here, so the antenna is not affected. But more importantly, it seems to be working right now. All right, let's there have a look on the inside. Satellite works with this system. So far. Yes. Well, I've tested it on Friday. I drove all around Denver. So, so the other way, obviously, to get in is just basically to pop up these little panels. Um, there's like basically three of them here. So now, Cole, if you can continue, can I have a light? Yep, there is a light. So Cole, if you can continue Cole, come to climb. On up. Poor camera guy. So I just opened this little opening here, and now there is room for up to two people. Really? Prove it, get in there. Yeah, up to two people and also a dog or a cat. So if you like camping with your cat, <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, this is, you know, the way to do it. <laughs> Random. Dogs usually come on camping trips more than cats, I would say. I'm, Probably I'm statistics kidding. are okay. I don't know. It's... Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> so let me try to lay down. Okay, you have the lights. So sorry, I don't have my bedding here yet. I'm six three. No, no, I really don't. We, he and I have had too many cuddle times together to begin with uh, in the past 14 years. Now, here's the cool part. So you can put two people up there, and then you could have an inflatable mattress here in the, in the uh, lower section. You can put two more people down here and then close everything up, and so they would be relatively snug as well. So you could, technically speaking, have a family of four in here, and um, as long as the kids get along, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So uh, Nathan and I just did a uh, video with the new Bean trailer, um, and what Bean found out was that, of course, their business exploded when COVID hit because everybody wanted to get the heck out of Dodge. 
because they were you know worried about getting COVID, understandably, so they wanted to get away from people. But when that trend changed, um, everything changed. People went back to the office, and of course, people were no longer as keen to buy camping gear. Uh, and so one of the things they did is they lowered the price of the of the you know of the bean trailer. Uh, and you know somebody's here saying, Paul um, Mad Cow Mad Cow, wow, says in typical TFL fashion, I'm sure this is overpriced. Uh, I, I don't know what you know overpriced is in this market. I, I just don't know. Well, I can give a couple examples. Thank yeah. you, Roman, and thank you for your question. Um, so we recently also showed another camping solution with Alex. So a few months back, he got a Radica aluminum structure on his truck, and with some options, that was about eleven thousand, twelve thousand uh, dollars. A couple of years ago, we had a actually on the Lightning F one fifty Lightning. We had a four-wheel campers uh, project M. That was about seventeen thousand. Then we also had a four-wheel campers full camper, you know, with the kitchen, the beds, and the drawers. That was forty thousand. So with some options here, this is about ten thousand eight hundred dollars. This system here. So is it overpriced or is it affordable? You know, we really try to give everybody choice on how much money they want to spend. Uh, and so, for example, um, this is a rooftop tent that, that was just delivered um, for $1,500, and we'll be doing a, a full review of that. The difference, of course, between this rooftop tent and that rooftop tent is that this comes from China. That is made in Montana. So, you know, how much do you want to support local businesses, you know, versus those abroad? So it really, it really depends on, you know, what your comfort level is on all this camping stuff. But you know, with spring coming, and as you know, we usually do a series called Camper Corner. We're trying to get back uh, to doing that so that you guys see some of the latest and greatest products that are out there. And uh, you know, I, I, when I first heard that we're putting this on the Tacoma, I wasn't like too pleased about it because I like using the bed for truck stuff. Uh, but I really like this. It, it's a really well-engineered, uh, easily thought out um, project. Is, is it hard to take on and off, Andre? Uh, no, it shouldn't be too hard. Like Nathan said, this is under 300 pounds, about 275-ish. Um, so four guys or people, you know, you have to unbolt four points. So these are, look, look at how beefy these brackets are. Everything is beefy. Yeah, everything so you, is milled and nice. So you, un, by the way, all of them have torque specs, little markers. So you unbolt four, four uh, brackets and four people should be able to just lift this up without a lot of issue, because it's about 275 pounds. Do you, know, do you know how tall it is? People are asking, could a little fit in a standard garage with it, obviously, with it. Oh, yeah. It sh well, well, it should. Well, I'm 6'3". Well, yeah, so it's so only like two you, inches taller than you, maybe three. Yeah, so if you have a seven-foot garage, this should probably still fit. Yeah. But I haven't tried my seven-foot garage yet. Well, it's definitely something look, worth looking at. I know a lot of you guys are probably upset like I am about the fact that trailers and campers and all that are remarkably expensive new. And by the way, their resale value drops like a rock. I like holding on to my money and buying new. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, he mentioned uh, the bean trailer. They were starting priced at what, 15 for those? 15,000? Yeah. Now, I know 15,000 may sound like a lot for anything, right? Teardrop. But that's, this is an off-road capable teardrop bare bones, but they still made a super lightweight one that almost anything can tow. We did a video where we're towing it with a Subaru. And I gotta tell you that for that price, that's sort of compelling. I've been looking at other teardrops that are off-road based and they're like 50,000 bucks. So this is way more affordable. Um, so once again, I get what you guys are saying. I'm there with you, but at the same time, you know, whatever we can get our hands on is what we're showing you. So we're not trying to say, oh yeah, buy the most expensive thing. All right, so let's answer some questions. Uh, we just had all the mid-sized trucks at the office. Uh, we're doing a series of videos. If you're watching TFL Truck, you know that we drag race them. Then this weekend, like we gauntlet. Like, I, I gauntlet, now we're doing an MPG. Right. Uh, but uh, we've got some great questions here. Uh, so uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oh gosh, these things are coming in fast and furious. Uh, Okay, uh, Travis H. asks, what mid-sized trucks would each of you pick if it were your own money? Um, so, Andre, your own money, we know what you picked. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a Colorado a year ago, but I bought a Colorado a year ago 
thinking that the new Tacoma is coming, the new Ranger is coming, the new this and this and this are coming. So I really wanted to get ahead of the game. Uh, right now, after hiking, after drag racing, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Ford Ranger. Mm. I'm leaning towards the least popular of all the vehicles. No. Yeah, the Nissan. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Ridgeline. <laughs> no, the Ridgeline's really good if I was just going to be in the city and, and never off-road or tow. But I really like the Nissan for one simple reason. It's comfortable for me. You know, certain body types work better in different types of trucks, right? I think the power is good. It's not that bad economy-wise. It just does what I like, and I like the looks of it. By the way, I did, I, I did not say Tacoma because I tow a 6,000-pound boat. And so I need a little bit of everything, right? right. I, I want a mid-size truck for garageability and small size, but I still need to carry a lot of weight. And my Colorado and the Ranger offer more payload. So that's my main reason uh, for that. Right. Uh, the only other thing that toasts as good as those in terms of numbers would be the Jeep uh, Gladiator. Somebody says, Nathan, you're a diehard Nissan fanboy. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's kind so, of a, I'm a mix. Um, I, I acknowledge that there are other trucks that are probably better in different ways. It's just that this happens to, you know, it's the zero gravity seats from a big, large American booty. That really does make it a big difference. So uh, I'm going I'm to complicate this. You know, I fall in love with this truck. I this really, one here? Yeah, I really love this new Tacoma. I just, it's a good truck. I, I, I agree. I, I love the turbo. I love the fact that the power comes on early in the uh, torque band. Uh, but having said that, it really depends what you're looking for because it's such a competitive market. So if you want a back seat, Ridgeline all day long. Yeah, the Ridgeline actually has a more usable really back seat. Feet. And I re the Ridgeline would be my second choice because of a manual option. If you want like cool retro styling, I'm there with the Frontier. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I think that's a very handsome truck. You know, if you want, um, if you kind of want value and engine choices, I think you have to go with the Ranger, the new Ranger, because all these other trucks, you get one engine choice. With the Ranger, how many do you get, Andre? Well, up to three now. Yeah, tell them about that. Actually, so three or four. So you have the base engine, which is a four-cylinder, right. two, three. Then you have a 2.7 V6 twin-turbo EcoBoost uh -huh. from the bigger trucks coming down to the Ranger. And, then and, the, and also the Raptor, okay, which is a three. three liter, so that's three engines. But I like Chevy for value. Uh, we just talked about value, right? The Chevy Trail Boss 4x4 with a towing pack is 42,000. So I like that for value. And then uh, I still think, and we, we, we uh, can't actually talk about this because we drove the new uh, uh, Gladiator. Yeah, the uh, Mojave. Yeah, and then uh, you know the, the driving impressions are embargoed until tomorrow morning. But for off-roading, you know, you're never going to get uh, <laughs> two lockers for the most part unless you go with uh, you know the Gladiator. That certainly has the most well and and a, the ZR2. and a discountable sway bar. Sure. Yeah, so you can get the ZR2 Bison as well. But but there's just something about the fact that it's a convertible. It is cool to be able to take the top off of a vehicle, and it's really utilitarian. Actually, my biggest issue with the Jeep, and one of the reasons why I constantly push it away, because I've been this close to buying one, the wheelbase is impossibly long, and so its turning radius is equivalent to, say, a full-size truck. And for me, I like the maneuverability. That kind of takes it and pushes it a little bit back. Yeah, and also the Jeeps are expensive. They're yeah. damn expensive, yeah, but I didn't want to go back into expense because, yeah. So people are asking, um, are you going to keep the truck a long time or are you getting rid of it in a few years? Uh, try mm. months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I keep we, much for years. I would say the longest we keep anything is like 18 months, but usually a year, six months in some cases. And why is that? So, yeah, there's a very simple reason. Is that because after a few months, you're going to be tired of seeing a blue Tacoma. Hey guys. It's, yeah. it's because of you guys and you want to see newer and newer stuff. Yes, of course, we want to keep every truck for 10 years to let you know long-term <laughs> reliability, but we, don't, we only have the budget for, what, two or three vehicles. Yeah, and then the other thing is, you know, we have so much money tied up in vehicles that we just, you know, don't buy them like you would for using them and then keeping them and then taking the kids to school or going on road trips. What we do is we buy them, we make videos, kind of when people get tired of it, we take that money and then move it into the next truck. So the problem is if we were to keep this, for you know, five years. five years, that's $45,000 we couldn't use to buy and, and review new trucks. And so that's why we kind of burn through them very quickly. Yeah. yeah, if this was like, here's a really good example. There's plenty of like all Toyota um, you know, channels out there and they would do like a long, long term test and they would build these things up and that would be a whole different story, but that's not what we do. We test new vehicles and then we add a couple things to them and then 
get rid of them and get in something else for you guys. There are a couple exceptions. We've had the Cummins for two years. That's so a the, studio the big, truck, the big Ram heavy duty yeah. Cummins because it's very useful. Yeah, it's become our shop truck. Yeah, no, it's a, that's become our shop truck. We just bought. Uh, we'll surprise you with something. We just bought a really cool vehicle in California, and Tommy and Case are going out there to pick it up, and they're using the Cummins because it's such a useful tow rig. Yes. Um, so there are some exceptions to that. There are exceptions right? to the rule. And what, what we mean by that is, um, you know, this tows what, Andre, 7,000 ish? 6,400. 6,400, right. Which is nowhere near. Whereas much. that Cummins tows. Well, 20,000 pounds, supposedly. Yeah, and so, you know, when we supposedly. use it. We modified it. We, we didn't modify it. Yeah, when we use it for towing, the problem is this would quickly run out of capacity, whereas the Cummins never runs out of capacity. Yeah, it's a beast. It, and it's, it's proven to be extremely reliable and just rock solid. And we've done a lot to it, too, and it's just, just smiles and keeps going. Andre, how long are you keeping in Colorado, people want to know? Uh, well, I, I'm, I want to act as if I was a company, <laughs> and I want to turn my trucks around to get more experience with different vehicles, although my wife said no. So, <laughs> totally get that. So, are you selling it? Not quite yet. If uh, somebody wants out there, can they buy it? No, not quite yet. Everything is for sale, guys, by the way. <laughs> everything has a price. <laughs> That's the perfect answer. This is America, right? <laughs> no, no. Oh my God. I want to keep my Colorado for at least a few more months, mm -hmm. maybe almost until next year. Sure. So maybe through this year. But if some, one of you comes out and says, hey, I, I want to give you, you know. 50 grand. No, not 50. 40 grand. I'm trying to help you. All right, and how about you, Nathan? Are you selling your Santa Cruz? Actually, yeah, I am. You uh, are? Dang, more news. <laughs> yeah, even more news. Um, and there'll be a couple things out there on that. So I decided that by the end of this month, I'm going to sell it um, and get rid of it. It's been great. There's no problems with it. How long have you had it? Uh, 18 months. Yeah, you've had a while. Yeah. Um, I, I'm changing a few things around. There's going to be other things happening. And so it just no longer fits uh, what new, I need it for. New wife? No, no, Whoa. same wife, same, same wife, but different life. There you go, there's a hint. No, I think minor things have changed, but there's, I, I don't really need it anymore because I'm not gonna be commuting with it like I used to, and so it just is time to, to send it on its way. All right, Jess asked, this is, this is a fun question. Uh, uh, hey guys, I need, I need your help. I need to purchase a car with good gas mileage. I only have $2,800 budget. What is your advice? <laughs> oh. No, there's, there's actually a couple things out there. Um, can you, well, yeah, can you drive stick? Because if you can find a vehicle, manual vehicle, a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla with high mileage, or you could even find something like an old Saturn, some of these old beaters, these things run forever as long as they're taken care of. Manual transmission, as long as you know how to work a manual, even if it's a little screwy, it should be able to work. So I would recommend those. Also, we have a channel, TFL Classics. We've done several videos relating to this. Mm -hmm. Really affordable vehicles to buy or avoid. Because there are some vehicles you must avoid. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we've done a few videos. Uh, recently, uh, my friend bought an old Ford Fusion. And those are also kind of tough cars. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't recommend just, it. You, you just have to find the right one. Yeah. Well, sometimes. All right, a couple more questions before we wrap this up. What's happening at the ranch? Uh, any with the, with the hard off road course, or we're going to see more of David. Uh, the hard off road course is still stowed in, basically. Yeah, it's just so much mud that every time we go in there, we have to spend like five hours washing vehicles. Yeah, well, and pulling well, them out. Th it's so this hard. is this is the Rocky Mountains, and and that's even higher up in the Rocky Mountains, and so all the snow from the mountains and all the goo comes down <laughs> into our ranch. Literally. And so it sits in the mud. And so we're not going to be able to use it as an off-road facility probably for another what, two months, give or take, until really spring kicks in and dries some of it out. But it'll be really cool once we hit that spot because it'll be really muddy and gooey and challenging. So another question from uh, James Gross. Can't wrap my head around the price of the new tacos. We live in rural Colorado and need a truck with four-wheel drive, but honestly, the price just doesn't compare with the Colorado, Colorado versus Tacoma question. Well, here's the deal. Let me give you this. <sighs> the two vehicles in Colorado that hold their value the most are the Tacoma and the Wrangler, yeah. those two. So yes, yes, it is more expensive, but it depends how long you're gonna keep it. If you're gonna keep it for the rest of your life, then I suppose you might as well get the cheaper truck. But if you wanna resell at some point, I promise you a Tacoma will be, I'm gonna say 25 to up to 50% more valuable. Later down the road. Later down the road. Yeah. And you know, that's, 
that carries a lot of value. And that's also why the vehicle's a lot more expensive because you won't lose as much money on it if and when, let's say your life changes and you need a full-size truck because all of a sudden you've got an additional family member, whatever, that Tacoma will always hold its value. And it's not just here in Colorado. It's, it's one of the best resale cars in the entire country. Trucks, yes. Trucks, sorry, trucks. Thank you. But, but there's something I wanted to mention. I think, Andre, you'd agree with me. There are a lot, and we don't advertise them very often. We don't bring them in because the automakers don't give them to us, but there are a lot of base level tradesmen work trucks that are four wheel drive that have just the basic equipment in them. And they Stubby. are, yes, yeah, Stubby's a very like good Stubby. example. Or others that are this price or even less that'll give you everything you need. I mean, is there a reason why you can't have a full size truck? Think about that because many full size trucks are right there with this price. Um, so. Uh, somebody says, any hybrid truck testing? Well, like you we said, we've got the Taco, and we, we have heard from insiders that the Maverick uh, is going to come in uh, finally as a plug-in hybrid, which will be really wonderful. Or a hybrid all-wheel drive. Yeah, and then, of course, Ram is coming out with a range extender. That's also coming. That's going to that's be pretty wild, I think. That may actually cover that gap between people who only want electrics and only want gas. I truly think that this could be something somewhat groundbreaking if they do it right. When are we doing a real review on the Ranger after? As soon as we get our grubby hands on one, yeah, right? Yeah, the minute we get it. <laughs> so, by the way, the first drive already happened, so we have a video I, I of... I think a real review. <laughs> oh, yeah, not a quick one. As soon as we take delivery of it, yeah, we're Guys, I mean, one. We, we try to be absolutely the first, so... I mean, it doesn't matter if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. If that's when we get it, we're going to shoot ourselves with it and make sure that you guys get that stuff. I mean, just as soon as possible. More questions? Uh, any more information about the Ram Rampage, Andre? Ah. Uh, well, yes. Um, by the way, this month, uh, Ram has said this, that there's a high-performance Ram 1500 truck going to be shown officially. Uh, Ram Charger Rampage? Yes. I'm sorry, I thought you said the Ram Charger. No, Ram uh, No, we don't have any news on the Ram Page. So the Ram Page is supposed to be their mid-sized truck possible. Thing. But, it, but there's no official word. No word I'm whatsoever. Sorry. I thought you said Ram Charger. I don't think there's going to be any Ram Page. Mm, I'm just, I'm just yeah. Stellantis is not. Do you think there's yeah, one coming? Stellantis is, uh, that's a whole different live broadcast. Yeah. Uh, but the, there's two sides to this. There's one side where there's a large contingent of people at Stellantis, and this is a fact, a that have been cutting. pushing for it. And then the other half is doing the cost cutting. So it's a big question of whether or not they think that they would be able to get a return on their investment. But you never know. What, you Look know. at this. Mid-sized segment is hot right now. Of course it's you hot. Know, everybody is putting trucks in here. Santa Cruz has just been refreshed in New York City. We saw it. Yeah, which, what do you guys think of that? I think... Yeah. It's got tow points. Big that, tow hooks. Okay, the, the, the tow hooks are really great. That's it. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to let it go on this one uh, answer here. Have to admit the Ranger Raptor is pretty awesome, just not obtainable for me. True that. Yeah. Um, and somebody else says uh, the Range Raptor is surprisingly cheap. I expected it to be closer to 70. It may be with dealer markups, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. And then if you guys want one, the problem is uh, dealers are only assigned a few allocations. Just a handful. Maybe it's one. Yeah. yeah some it, some it, dealers it, have one. I think it uh, depends on the, their footprint, how big they are, the, how many they would get. That yeah. makes sense. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We have a lot more mid-sized truck comparisons coming. Yeah. Let us know if this format is something that you guys want to see in the future because we can repeat this. It's not that hard. And maybe we would with be three happy mics, to. even. Well, maybe three mics next time. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Altfl.com. See you guys. Ciao.